I just now started, you know, to promote my boxing career and stuff like that. Um, so they always ask me, like, did you just start boxing? But realistically, I've been boxing for, for a long time. It's just that last year I just turned professional. And uh, I started to promote it a little more. Um, and with that being said, I got into boxing uh, because one of my good friends, uh, Chris Glenn, he's, I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but he's also in Martinsburg, well, was in Martinsburg, but he was a um, known boxer out here. And uh, we were cool, and he took me to the gym with him. And I was, at first, I was like his cameraman. I was just recording him uh, hit the bag and do, you know, workouts at the boxing gym. And then out of nowhere, I just kind of, like, picked up the gloves and been with it ever since. So I was probably, like, 16, 17 when I you know, first started with taking boxing series for So first off, congratulations on becoming professional here within the year, I guess. Just uh, kind of tell us a little bit about your journey from being an amateur back when you started at 16, 17, what the process was like to coming to this point. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, when I first started, uh, I don't think, like, I understood, like, the whole boxing game and as far as like you know when you get into the boxing game it's a lot of people that think it's just all you do is just kind of like put on the gloves and go fight somebody but it's, it's more to it it's way more politics into it um you know you got to deal with promoters coaches um and just you know just within yourself you know you gotta you can't just jump out there and you know get in the ring and think you can box you know people people die in the ring people you know uh really get hurt in the ring so I think I wanted to take it slower um you know and keep training and keep getting better and better before I you know felt like it was I was comfortable enough to kind of get in the ring and you know have my pro debut and uh I mean that's pretty much it I really I really just took it took it slow starting off and then I jumped straight into it once I felt comfortable you mentioned some of the stuff there but boxing is a lot different than other like team sports obviously if you want to play in the NFL, you know, you go through college and then you get drafted boxing, you have to be signed. And, and I guess, how do you get your name out there? How do you go through that process to find a professional organization to box in? Um, so with that being said, I mean, there's, there's a different, I guess, uh, routes you can go when it comes to, you know, being professional or turning professional. Mine specifically, uh, you know, me, like I said, I was fighting before um, that I was professional. Um, and I was doing, when I was growing up, I was always in like karate, taekwondo and all the little stuff like that, that most people put their kids in. But then like boxing, uh, once I seen my, my friend, once I seen him fight amateur and then he finally turned pro, then I had another friend, because um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, I'm uh, actually like signed and managed by uh, uh, former WBF um, super middleweight champion Perry Ballard and uh, he was a um, boxer here in Marchburg so I'm, I'm signed to him and managed by him um, so once I seen you know him and talked to him and his son was professional as well I was like you know what I feel like I'm comfortable enough to you know with my skills and stuff like that to kind of just take it to the next level and I turned pro and I've been at it ever since so what, I guess, kind of was that one defining moment where you realized growing up, this is what I want to do with my career and went from there? Uh, I realized it when, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I kind of like realized it um, when I was, out, so I was in the gym and I kept, I kept training like every day. I was, I was going to the gym, waking up um, like four or five in the morning, jogging, stuff like that. And then I was just, I felt like I was doing everything for no reason. I wasn't competing. I wasn't, um, you know, going to different gyms like most boxers do. They go to different gyms, they spar, um, you know, various competition. And I felt like I wasn't doing enough. So when I realized it was like something I wanted to do and stuff like that, it was like I finally ran into another coach and he was just putting me up to the test. I mean, he wanted to see if I really wanted it. And uh, he took me to a, a gym in D.C. I'll never forget. Uh, it was like a 16 year old. And, uh, you know, everybody goes in there like, oh, I can fight this, this and that. So I went in there with the same mentality and a 16 year old. He he put the pause on me for sure. And it was it wasn't embarrassing. I mean, it was a learning experience for sure. But it just goes to show you, like, you know, this level of competition, it, it's only going to get better and better. So uh, but he was like a 10 time national champion, sparred him and. Uh, when I competed with him, I was like, you know, if I can do it with him, if I can hang in there with him, then I can I can hang in there with anybody. So that's when I realized, like, this is something I want to do, something I want to keep going, keep keep doing forever. So, Bammy, you're two now. Uh, 
in your professional career. You have a knockout, I believe, and a decision. Uh, just, I guess, take us through your career so far and what you have coming up. I know you were trying to schedule another fight. Uh, you know, has that been scheduled, and then uh, who will be against and when? Yeah, so... Um Two and zero, uh, one knockout should be two knockouts. But uh, last fight I fought in the Dominican Republic, and uh, I think I, I feel like their rules were a little different. I feel like if it was in the states, um, the refs here we kind of well they would have kind of like stopped it when they when they felt like it was needed to be stopped. But in the Dominican Republic, they kind of like let it go a little longer. So obviously, it just went to the um, the judges. Um, so for this next fight, uh, we're trying to get it confirmed. Um, it's a couple things going on right now that I think they're trying to get a contract, stuff like that. Um, but we were looking at June 22nd, um, and I think that was in North Carolina. Um, but as of right now, there's no confirmed date. But like I said, we're still looking. Um, and I think I think the next one after June 22nd, if I don't get that, I think it's July or something. Uh, I think July 13th in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, something like that. Um, but, yeah, and if I can't get June 22nd, then we're going to try to shoot for July 13th. Let's walk us through a little bit of uh, your training, your day-to-day -day routine, what you do to stay in shape and prepare for fights. So uh, I, wake, I wake up, jog um, every day. If I don't do it every day, then I'll try to do it every other day. How, how much or how long of a jog do you usually go for? Probably not as much as I should. I mean, I I have, so I live in a, uh, like a cul-de-sac and uh, I just jog the whole neighborhood, run the cul both cul-de-sacs. And then uh, that's it. Like, I don't, that's it. I mean, I probably should hit the, you know, the Marsbird track or, you know, some track and just, you know, get a lot of miles in, but I don't do that. Um, I think I think that's what I like to do. What I'm not supposed to do, it seems like. So I, I don't know. I gotta do better on, in that aspect. But uh, as far as training for fights and stuff like that, um, sparring, uh, just depending on what weight we're fighting at. I only got two fights, so um, I've only fought at like 148, 140. I think my first fight was like 142 catch weight, and then my second fight was 145, 148. Something I can't even really remember. I want to say 148. Um, so just cutting, you know, hitting the sauna, uh, you know, trying to stay hydrated, but at the same time cut, you know, so you can make weight for the fight. And, uh, I mean, that's that's really it, the sparring, jogging, jumping rope, shadow boxing, and uh, just, just standing in the gym consistently every day. Nothing changes, really. You mentioned, like, going into the Dominican, the fight, and I'm, I'm sure you've fought in different countries and other stuff like that, I guess. So uh, what's that like? And you mentioned some of the rules being different and maybe some of the refs uh, doing some different things uh, depending on where you're fighting. So just talk about, I guess, those challenges and, and some of the different places you've been so far. So the Dominican Republic specifically, um, I liked it. It was a great experience. You know, uh, most people, when they, I guess, start off with their career boxing um, or just any career, really, I say they, they, they probably don't get the opportunity to uh, fight overseas, you know, so early at least. Um, so it, for it to be my second fight and I fought in, you know, Dominican Republic overseas, it was a, it was a great experience. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, my name is Javier, so I'm, a lot of people don't know that, but I'm, I'm Spanish, I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican. And uh, so it was definitely good to go over there to, uh, you know, see the other side of things or whatever. But um, the, the I guess the way they live over there is obviously not the same as here. So the rules are different. The You know, the walk, the talk, just everything is different over there. And, you know, for someone that never been there before, you know, I never had a passport. And so I had to go there. Um, it, was, it was a great experience. But I just if I if I had an opportunity to fight there again, I probably would wait a little longer. Um, just until I feel like um, I know the ins and outs of everything. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'd definitely go back to visit, but to fight, not right now. My next question, kind of more of a fun question for you, where did the uh, nickname Bam Bam or Bammy come from? So a lot of people ask me that, uh, and I tell them. So I don't know the exact, you know, I, don't, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you, but I do know. Uh, a long time ago when I was in like ninth grade, I remember like it was yesterday. I, I remember this part. Uh, so I walked into the hallway one day and uh, I think I like asked my teacher to go to the bathroom and I, and I went to the bathroom, was walking in the hallway and some girl that I rode the bus with and she like kind of lived down the street from me. She was like, uh, bam, bam, get the class. And I was like, how you know my nickname? She was like, everybody knows your nickname. And I was like, hmm. And after that, Everyone was calling me Bam Bam. Everyone was calling me Bam. And then I think, like, 
as I got older, Bam Bam kind of seemed it, it kind of seemed like really immature. So I was like, all right, let's just shorten it from Bam Bam to Bam. And Bammy came into play. I don't know. I guess a lot of people just put the Bammy in there to make it sound, but I, I really don't know. But that's just what it is. It stuck with me, and that's what we run it with. Every good boxer needs a good nickname. For sure. So might change eventually. I don't know. Some like my first opponent, he told me that I hit like a train. So I don't know. We might incorporate uh, incorporate train. that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. We <laughs> might we might go. incorporate that one of these days. I don't know. Depends. Yeah. Work on it. Yeah, Colin, for sure. Colin, you work on that. I don't know. I like it. I can see that uh, tattoo, at least on the one hand. I can't see DM yeah, on yeah. both. So yeah, it's, it's bam, the bam, bam bam. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. I, I get it. Exactly. Yeah. You well, get that's you. what I like. I mean, you're going regardless. You're going to get hit with both of them, regardless. So yeah. you might as well, you know, you might as well just tap bam on both of them. You're going to get hit with both of them, regardless. So that's what it is. I wanted to ask you because um, we don't really talk about boxing too much, uh, and I guess this, you're the first boxer we've ever interviewed, so that's kind of cool. Really? But uh, I wanted to ask you, I guess, about the the sport of boxing and how it is now, and how the real popular boxing has become the celebrity boxing. Mm -hmm. How do you hope that that changes over your career? Because I don't know about you, but I don't really consider that real boxing. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, uh, I'm trying to, trying to speak on it without kind of sounding real biased about it. But I mean, obviously I'm in the sport of boxing. I'm new to the sport of boxing. Um, so I don't have any, you know, right to speak on certain things when it comes to boxing. But what I can say as far as my career, um, I do see social media becoming, you know, well, it's already a big thing, but I mean, I see it becoming, you know, one of the things where um, my theory is in a couple of years that social media is going to be one of them things where like there won't even be no real like news stations and stuff like that. I mean, everything's going to be broadcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything like that. So when it comes to the celebrity boxing and, and TikTok boxing, YouTube boxing, whatever you want to call it, like I feel like it's bringing in a lot of people money. It's, it's definitely paying people's bills. But like you said yourself, it's not really real boxing, you know, and I feel like for the sport, itself it's kind of now it's looked upon like you know oh this this guy he he's not serious or he can't take it serious and he's just a youtube boxer tiktok boxer but regardless is i mean you have to get in the ring and you your life is on the line regardless like whether you think you're going to win whether you know you're going to win i mean you're still putting your your brain out there you know brain damage or whatever your, your life is still on the line so i mean you can play football you can play basketball baseball but you can't play boxing and uh, you know it's just you in there, so there's no teammates. There's there's no no there's nobody in there with you other than you. So that's just my take on it. Do you have anyone that maybe uh, growing up you would watch or something like that that really inspired you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, growing up, like when it comes to old school boxers, I like Roy Jones Jr., um, Ali Tyson. Um, I mean, I never really watched like. The older guys only because I feel like when I was getting into boxing, like everybody that was coming up that was or newer boxers, like those were like my favorite ones to watch. Um, but yeah, like now, of course, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, you know, uh, a lot of them, a lot of them guys that I look up to now just because, you know, I'm in that sport and I, eventually I don't think I'll ever face them, you know, anytime soon. But, you know, eventually the goal is to get on a, maybe a card with their fight that they're fighting on or, you know, something similar to that. Even if I can get into the same gym and train with them, you know, get some sparring in with them, that'd be great. Before we, before we let you go here, uh, what's the best way for people to kind of follow the rest of your career, learn more about you and go from there just promote yourself so everything uh all my social media platforms are going to be uh bammy castanon that's b-a-m-m-y-c-a-s-t-a-n-o-n -M -M bammy castanon on everything twitter instagram facebook uh i think that's like all i got yeah that's all i got so yeah 